Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to open a set of Permaseal headlights. Um, now there are different kinds of Permaseal, uh, and you're not really going to know what you have until you start working on the light, so it can vary. Um, this light is not horrible. There are some lights that I know from personal experience, I will not even try to open them. I just cut them open. Um, some Permaseal is horrible some is not bad if you're not sure what you have uh, then it's worth giving it a shot um, and you know some gets worse over the years too so like I know that uh, charger headlights used to be pretty easy to open the last set that I got was a nightmare uh, so I don't I, I know some brands can change what uh, perma seal they're actually using uh, I know a lot of the new Subaru lights, the Permaseal is a nightmare. Uh, it can be opened, but you're going to really mangle your light up a good bit to open it up. So, um, you know, take this as techniques more than anything, but don't expect to have the same experience on every Permaseal light. Um, I'm going to show you the tricks that I use, I'm going to show you what you can try to do, and hopefully it works for the set that you're building but be prepared that it may not. So, uh, as far as stuff that you're gonna need, uh, so obviously whatever light you're doing, this is a uh, 2015 Scion TC, uh, made by Depot. Uh, you're also gonna wanna have a pair of gloves so you don't burn your hands, because you will be needing to get these lights a little bit hotter than normal. Um, a pair of latex gloves is a good idea as well if you want to try to keep the cover clean. Um, you can put them over top of your work gloves and that way you have heat protection and fingerprint protection. Um, you are going to be getting your hands on these lights a lot so they are going to get a little bit dirty. Uh, one thing that I did before I try to open up these lights, I will usually go ahead and do my ceramic coating first and the reason being ceramic coating makes it much much easier to clean the lights uh, and it also makes the the light itself uh, stronger uh, resistance against scratches so um, if you are doing ceramic coating on your lights like I do on my builds uh, it's not a bad idea to do that before you open the lights um, just because it does reduce scratches and it does make it much easier to buff any dirt or um, any butyl or anything else that you might be working with to get it right off the covers. Uh, but do remember on the inside though, you don't want to touch that, just, just on the outside. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to want some kind of a screwdriver. Uh, I'm going back to my old uh, electric one here. Um, now that depends on the light. Uh, that is on this light that I'm doing it because it does actually have screws holding it together. Many Permaseal lights do not. Uh, but you will want to remove those screws uh, for, you know, if you do have them on your lights. Um, a flathead screwdriver is a good idea. Uh, you know, a couple of them, probably not a bad idea. You don't want one that's huge, but you don't want one that's like super small. Um, that's the size that I'm using. I don't even know if these are 3 16 according to Craftsman there. And then this is a very handy tool to have. Um, if you do a lot of these, you probably want to pick one or two of these up. Two's not a bad idea. I only got the one, but uh, I don't know. At some point, I'll buy another one. I just ain't done it yet. But uh, these are pretty good. They get right in the light, and they'll split. Uh, I'll put a link for these. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're, they're not too expensive, but they are pretty darn handy. Uh, to get that extra leverage to get that seal split open. Uh, and that, that's uh, pretty much it for opening. Uh, but once you get them open, you're going to have to clean stuff out. So there'll be a couple extra tools for that. Um, but uh, I'll go over that a little bit later. Uh, as far as the oven goes, so you're going to want to preheat to uh, like 270, about 270 degrees. Um, that's enough to melt your lights, so keep that in mind. As with any case, when you're dealing with the oven, do not let the plastic touch metal. 
Now, how you go about that can vary. I have a wood board in the bottom of mine, um, but you know, you could do something different. Just use something that's not flammable. Uh, you know, you don't want something like a, you know, microfiber towel or something that might melt or something like that, possibly. Um, something non-flammable that you can put in your oven and use. Uh, I am using the shop oven here, but any kitchen oven will work fine. Um, but you want about 270, and you want to make sure that you have a surface that is not metal that you can use uh, to put everything on. Um, so, all right, I've already preheated. Uh, very important that you do preheat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. And I'm gonna give this one, um, when you're dealing with a, a light for the first time, you probably wanna give it about five minutes. Pull it out, get a feel for the light. It probably won't be loose enough to open yet. But the last thing you wanna do is put it in there for too long and then you start getting stuff melting. Some plastics on these lights can be really cheap and melt. And five minutes is about the window where you're pretty safe on everything. I've never melted anything at 270 for five minutes. So it's a good idea to just go ahead and get a check at five minutes. Don't expect it to open right up, but get a feel, start prying around the edges, and it'll get you an idea. Then you can shove it back in. I'm gonna do a 10 minute, because I know that these lights, I've opened them up enough that I'm comfortable at 10 minutes. But uh, we'll come back, I'll pull them out, and I'll show you how it started. All right, so got my gloves on. Go ahead and pull the light out here. And like I said, it, it can get a little bit hot, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my screws. Now, I pull out the screws after I heat up because the screws can actually snap in the perma seal. I've found when you're trying to pull them out. If you heat up the Permaseal first, they come right out. So keep that in mind. It depends on the light. Like I said, uh, this one, I know that they snap. It's not good. Uh, but other brands, you may not have that problem. those out now you're going to kind of want to go along the bottom here because the first part that you're prying on you're going to mangle it up a little bit so I like to go right along the bottom here and just shove that screwdriver in there trying to go down towards the base of that lens and pry it up a little bit and that way you can just go down in there around and then force it up like this then you're going to take your tool here and you're going to kind of follow it along the side being like my gloves on it's not that hot but uh i can feel the heat so i can imagine if you don't have gloves this is gonna, it's going to hurt your hands so definitely make sure you got gloves be careful with the tabs as you're pulling around the side you don't really want to break them and they are going to be rather fragile being how hot it is so I just kind of stick my finger in there to give myself room to pry as I work my way around and you can see this particular light is coming open without too much fuss and a lot of it has to do with that back plastic on these lights the back half of the light is a rather soft plastic and the heat seems to work really well to soften that back side and make it release the butyl now the flip side the problem with this is that it leaves all of that butyl in one piece 
on the front lens. So I gotta go back and remove all of that and I will show you how I go about that. If you've got a light that has a little bit more of a solid plastic for the back side, uh, you'll probably end up having some butyl go to the back, some butyl go to the front. Uh, it'll kind of split a little bit. I'm sorry, not butyl, permaseal, permaseal. <laughs> I use the right terminology here. This is a permaseal, this is not a butyl light. Um, but there, so as you can see, I've got it all open. The channels are perfectly clean. There's nothing in there. I don't even have to do anything else with the back side here. That thing's done. The front side, though, has all of that perma seal on there. So I'm going to show you how I go about removing all that. Uh, the first thing I will do, though, is I'm going to remove this bezel here. Um, and once again, this depends on the lights that you're using. Some lights, it's going to be a little bit harder to get that out than others, uh, especially if you have little tabs or anything that go into like this one here kind of goes in a little bit to the butyl so got to kind of work with that in this case so there's our cover ready to get that perma seal off all right so we got the lens here i uh, went ahead and laid down some uh, nice soft microfiber cloths underneath so they're less likely to scratch anything up uh you will need uh some kind of a heat gun um uh, like you know Wagner's or anything like that will work fine. I do like these smaller ones uh, because they have a protective cover over the front tip so you're less likely to burn anything. Um, if you happen to set it down next to something it, it's less likely to, to be able to actually melt plastic or anything so I do like these a little bit better in the shop here uh, but they don't heat up quite as fast as some of the like actual paint stripping heat guns so uh, keep that in mind you know I have one of each just depends where I'm using it you're also going to want some kind of a like a needle nose plier something with a long tip like this I do like the smaller ones personally because it's a little bit easier to handle um, but you know whatever you have similar long tip style is going to work well the way that we're going to go about this is we're going to heat up the perma seal in sections um, so what the goal here is is to make the perma seal itself uh, go from like a dull plasticky look to a glossy look and basically you're melting the perma seal now it's important that you do not apply so much heat that you melt the lens itself um, so when you're aiming the heat gun try to aim it in a way where the heat from the heat gun isn't going into the light so much. Uh, I mean, obviously the light itself will heat up as you're doing this, but you're not trying to heat the actual surface of the light. You're focusing on the perma seal itself. And once again, you're trying to get it to that glossy uh, color. Uh, it's a very glossy black, basically. I will uh, stop it when I get it there and I'll, and I'll kind of show you to get a better idea. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start. So now you can see it's kind of like a glossy black there, basically with the perma seal nice and soft, so it's a little bit easier to pull it right off of that plastic. And to start, I'm just going to kind of separate the two, and then I'm going to try to peel it up enough that I can get the pliers around it and just kind of twist it out almost like spaghetti. And you'll start to notice, uh, depending on the, the size of the area that you're working with, as it cools down, and it will cool down pretty quick, it will become harder to separate the 
perma seal from the light and you're just gonna have to go back over it again with the heat gun and start the process all over and you're gonna do that same process the whole way around the light as you can see I got this section cleared you're talking for a full set of lights you know it's a couple hour job you want to take your time you want to try to make sure that you don't uh, touch anything on the inside of the lens as much as possible wearing gloves here is not a bad idea I do find that I can grab a hold of things better uh, with my bare hands so uh, I've done it enough that I, I go ahead and I risk it um, but uh, just keep that in mind if you get a fingerprint inside of the lens it's going to suck really bad so uh, uh, it's just gloves are not a bad idea here uh, in addition there are you know different methods and different ways of doing this I've had some where the butyl just did not want to come out and I'll go over it with like an ultrasonic cutter and just basically try and gently to cut as much of it off as I can without cutting the plastic just trying to cut through the butyl or the perma seal itself uh, that method does work it's just not quite as clean uh, as if you can do it with heat um, uh, in addition to opening the lights, there are several different methods that people can use. Um, one trick that you can try if you have a light that doesn't seem to want to come apart the way that I did it, uh, you can add some kind of a penetrating lubricant. Uh, WD-40 will work. I find that some of the more expensive uh, penetrants work better. Things like Croil that will actually, uh, it, it's designed to creep deeper in um, those work better so basically you can spray uh, a hot light that you just pull out of the oven just spray it around the seam and the, those lubricants will work their way in and start separating the perma seal from the plastic it's not always necessary as you saw with these lights that I did the depot lights the plastic is a little bit softer so with enough heat it automatically just separates on its own it's not bad uh, but some lights are a little bit more difficult uh, maybe like a charger set chargers have uh, a thicker plastic backing it's very hard uh, plastic backing so they don't uh, they don't soften up quite as easily as the depot lights so for those um, using some kind of a uh, penetrating lubricant works well uh, I do really like this stuff made by Amzo it's called MP um, it just in general this stuff is really good because it, it it lasts longer it's like it it dries as almost like a silicone substance and it works really really well and it stays for a long time I like using these on um, uh, your Z rods and uh, different different rods within uh, CNC equipment things like laser cutters uh, CNC machines, uh, 3D printers. Uh, this works really well to keep the machine running smoothly and it doesn't trap dirt like uh, WD-40 would. Um, so this is really good stuff to have just in general but it also works really well for opening the lights. It seems to want to get in there really good. Um, but uh, WD-40 will work if you have that. Just maybe not as well. Um, and then you got some lights that straight up just cut them open. I think uh, some of the new uh, Subaru lights are that way. Like I was able to open up a set of WRX lights for the 22 plus, um, but if I ever do another set, I'm cutting it open. I, I had to mangle that light seal the whole way around, and it took a good bit of uh, work to get it back in shape. Um, one thing you can do if you if you do have a set that you open up and you did mangle the trim piece around the side on the actual light, um, you can use the heat gun to kind of mold it back into shape. Just hit the areas that are all mangled and just kind of you know push them back into shape. Now keep in mind if you are getting the plastic soft enough to remold it fingerprints are going to press into that plastic so you're going to want to use something um, with a, a flat shiny surface to help mold it back into shape and that will actually it will the plastic will take the form of that surface uh, so it can actually look pretty clean so that's a little trick um, I actually uh, use uh, I've got some uh, Samsung oh live buds or whatever they call them uh, and I got a little case for it and I, I find that works really well because it's nice and smooth uh, but basically a smooth plastic surface works well uh, to help reform that 
edge in the event that it does get mangled. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish up removing all of this and come back and kind of show you what it looks like. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on just so I don't forget. Uh, when you're putting the lights back together, if you had a set that was Permaseal and you reseal it, you can use Butyl. Uh, and I would recommend you use Butyl because uh, it will, in general, make it easier to open it back up in the event that you need to. Um, you can also use uh, Gasket Maker, like uh, from AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts, something like that. Uh, that will work as well, uh, but it's a little bit more permanent. And in some cases, I find that the Gasket Maker is actually harder to open back up than it was with the perma seal. So keep that in mind. If you if you uh, go through all of this work, it's probably better off if you use uh, butyl to seal back up. Uh, but on the flip side, if you do use butyl, if you're working on a light like this one here has screws that hold it together, so it's not a big deal. Most Permaseal lights that I've worked with don't actually use screws to hold it together. Uh, and if that is the case for the light that you're working on, what you're going to want to do is follow... Uh, i got another video where I actually show how to use screws to seal a light back up. You're going to want to follow that because, uh, unfortunately with Butyl, if it's a hot enough day out, the light will try to open itself back up because uh, that butyl will get soft and then the lens is pretty much free to move wherever it wants to move. Um, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. If you do use butyl to seal back up, you're going to want to uh, add screws to seal the light back up. And I do have a video for that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to remember to link it at the end of this video uh, showing you how to use screws to seal a light back up. Um, but all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get all this out come back in, I don't know, an hour or two, whatever it's going to take me to do all this, and uh, show you guys what I got. All right, so I finished that lens. Uh, got all the perma-seal off, and I put it right back onto the housing. And the purpose of that is just kind of go around and see how fitment is. Um, if you pride too much on the housing, it can deform the back side. Uh, and you may have to possibly put it back in the oven at 270 for like 10 minutes to soften everything up again. You know, just go ahead and put the lens on, uh, secure it in place so that it doesn't try to open up on you if you need to do the screw method or uh, screw it shut in the case of this light. Put it back in the oven and it will kind of like soften up and then form back the way that it needs to. Usually the lens covers will take a little bit more heat to deform, so they might take more like 300, so they should be in the proper form. They should not have deformed. It's the back side that usually will have that issue. Um, so you just kind of got to put it back on there like I did here and just see this is actually in really good shape, so I don't think I actually deformed anything, uh, but I've done these lights a few times, so I'm kind of familiar with it. Um, in addition, I am going to go around, and I can see places like right here, where uh, obviously I did some prying, and it kind of bent the plastic a little bit. I'm going to go back over areas like that with my heat gun, and just reform them around the light so that it fits better, and it will seal better uh, when I put everything back together. So you basically just want to go around, just like this. And you're not trying to get this quite shiny as much as just soft. So kind of like as you're going over it, just feel it. At the point that the plastic becomes shiny, it becomes, uh, it's, it's pretty much melted at that point. So if you touch it, you will greatly deform it. And uh, you're actually going to uh, probably press in your finger, your uh, fingerprint into the plastic. You don't really want to do that. So. I'm kind of just getting it like right on the edge of that, forming it back into the shape of the light, holding it there while it cools off a little bit. Uh, you can take the lens cover off as well if it makes it easier. I uh, like this one here. It's not too hard. Just pull it right off like that. And I know like down in here, this is where I started. So uh, that part is a little bit deformed. And just like that, uh, 
softening up the plastic just enough that you can deform it uh, or you can form it back into the shape that it's supposed to be and it will hold. And once again, this is why you, you ideally want to start on the bottom side and that way anything that I did greatly deform will uh, pretty much be hidden by the fact that it's on the bottom of the light. And just like that, I can go ahead and test fit this once again. It should just pretty much snap right into the housing, just like that. Uh, so there you go, Parma Seal. Uh, this set is a little bit of an easier set. Uh, once again, there are some sets that just straight up, just wave the white flag and give up. Don't uh, don't drive yourself crazy on every set of Perma Seal. Um, I open up some, and I uh, cut open others. So it just depends. Um, hopefully, I do a couple more of these videos. I will obviously I will be. I do have some plans for some uh, some different videos coming up. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new stuff. And uh, uh, thanks for watching.